Hi, this is Jack Stanley. It is 100 degrees in the shade right now. It's, we're going through a massive heat wave here in the East Coast and in the Midwest, so I hear. But I'll tell you, it's been pretty brutal in the New York metropolitan area. I'm thinking, contemplating on this day, which is our Independence Day, July 2nd, 1776, is when independence was declared. We all know when the printers printed up a small declaration of independence, they put the 4th on the date. That's how we got the 4th. I mean, nothing happened on the 4th. But as I'm thinking of this, our 242nd anniversary of that amazing moment when we created a country, we created an idea of a country. We really didn't create the country yet. In fact, we wouldn't for a number of years. But let us take that revolutionary spirit and let's direct it to our present day. I'm often asked in conversation with people saying, don't you think, don't you think that a lot of the actions today are very much like our revolution? Well, I said there are similarities in some respects, but in the case of the colonists, they were going against a government which they considered oppressive. They wanted to change, uh, and they wanted to expand their liberties. What I'm seeing today is, in many respects, the reverse of that. Yes, they may be against a government they don't like. And yes, they may be against speakers they don't care to hear. And yes, they may protest and attack and tear things apart, just like they did during the time of the American Revolution. But the objective is completely and totally different. And that's important because what I find is happening is instead of finding ways to enhance our liberties, we are reacting to some of the troubles of our government by trying to censor and contain the words, speeches, thoughts, activities, writings of individuals whom some people do not agree with. You see, that isn't liberty. That's called censorship. Censorship is part of what fascism is. So what I am seeing today is you have your right and you have your left, and a lot of times those that are on the right disagree with the left. And there's a lot of speakers who speak controversially, and lots of students and faculty go out of their way to make sure they can't speak. This is the very thing that the Declaration of Independence was created to stop. This was the very thing that the Declaration of Independence was designed to remove. Censorship, control, stifling the growth of people and communities. And the only way you can improve the way you think, improve the way you you, you judge things and learn things is by hearing both sides of an issue. I've always been fond of the statement that the First Amendment gives you the right to be offended. Please understand how important freedom of speech is. No matter what your ideology, no matter what your feeling, no matter what side of the fence you reside on, freedom of speech and the right to say what you think 
is one of the most precious rights, if not the most precious right in the world. Because if you don't have the freedom to express yourself, if you don't have the freedom, freedom to try to change your lives, if you don't have the freedom to, to push away problems and rise above the fray, you have no freedom at all. So I would like you all to think, as we celebrate the 242nd anniversary of the voting on independence today, July 2nd, 1776, and think about what they tried to do. And try to think about what we're trying to do, because in many cases, lots of the people who are doing what they're doing have no idea why they are doing what they're doing. And this is a problem, because this is, this is not something that has just sprung up. This is something that's been going on for years. There are ideologies that have been pushed onto some of our younger generations, and they've grown up without understanding the government civics. They've, they don't understand rights. They don't understand how and why we had to have a revolution, why there's a Declaration of Independence, why there is a Constitution, or why there is a Bill of Rights. This is paramount when it comes to how things are taking place around uh, our college campuses and around the country as a whole. We are divided people now. We have those that like one ideology and we have those that are against it. And sometimes those that are against the ideology that they're against are worse than the original disease. There are people who speak terrible things, let's say on one side or the other, and then there are those that react to it. And quite often the reaction is a hundred times worse than the original problem. So in many respects, sometimes I'm not totally afraid of the, the person that upsets people. I'm worried and scared of the people that react to the people that are offended by this or that. So think of all these things. And as we work our way into the 242nd anniversary and of, of the creation of the idea that would become this country, think of what we're doing now and think how we can remedy it. Think how we can advance ourselves. Think how we can stop a lot of the absolute chicanery and nonsense that is becoming part of our public forums because basically you see idiocy at work and those men that created our Declaration of Independence were brilliant and we shouldn't make a mockery of that in this present age in which we are far more educated in this present age in which we are supposed to be far more advanced we come, along, we come along looking foolish compared to those who preceded us 242 years ago. They rise far above our poor powers. We should be embarrassed. They were great. And we have a long way to go before we even get close to their brilliance. Thank you.